Dear all, good morning. Today we shall be discussing an important topic from examination point of view that is peritensural abscess also called as queen C. It is defined as collection of pus between the transfer capsule and the superior constrictor muscle. Peritensural abscess might be caused by aerobic as well as anaerobic organisms commonly being the anaerobes. The anaerobes. If we aspirate the contents of the abscess, most of the time there will be very much foul smelling. There is high chance that the anaerobic flora might be associated with the peritensural abscess in relation to tonsillitis which is commonly caused by group A beta hemorrhagic streptococci. The infection might occur de novo that is without any previous cause as a part of acute or chronic tonsillitis. When the patient is having chronic tonsillitis or acute tonsillitis, there might be blockage of the crypt leading to intertonsillar abscess, leading to peritonsillitis and peritonsillar abscess. The pus usually corrects in the crypta magna which almost goes up to the total depth of tonsils and this can spread towards the peritonsillar area. The third important cause is abscess of Weber's salivary gland in the supratonsillar fossa that leads to quincy. The supratonsillar fossa contains some of the minor salivary glands. You can see minor salivary gland here, minor salivary glands. Especially the Weber's gland, they help to clear the peritonsillar area. And when they get infected, there might be abscess formation which might be caused by abscess of Weber's salivary gland. Important question to be asked in the viva is why does the pus collect usually near the upper pole or soft palate? One of the reasons is that Weber's salivary glands are present in the supratonsillar fossa. They are the major cause for peritonsillar abscess formation. Next being the upper part of the peritonsillar space is more loose and areolar in comparison to the lower part which is more fibrotic. Therefore the pus collects in the supratonsillar area in the peritonsillar space. How does the patient present to you when the patient is having peritonsillar abscess? Usually it happens in young adult patient with severe urinophagia, fever, halitosis and muffled voice. Patient also might be having difficulty to open the mouth. The condition usually affects the young adults. The patient also might not be having any tonsillar infection in the past as it might happen de novo. On examination, the peritonsillar area will be swollen and will be congested. Tonsils might be hidden behind the anterior pillar. Occasionally, tonsils might be pushed medially and they might be congested. There might be a bulge in the anterior pillar region and in the soft palate region at the same site and the uvula might be pushed towards the opposite side. The jugular diagnostic lymph nodes are enlarged and tender. Patient might have difficulty to open the mouth that is called trismus and sometimes when it happens in children there might be torticollis. The children cannot turn the neck towards the opposite side. Peritonsillar abscess is usually a unilateral condition. So the patient has unilateral complaints in the throat. In tonsillitis, there will be bilateral complaints in the throat, bilateral throat pain. Most of the times, diagnosis is straightforward. When the patient presents to you with this certain features, then you can find out it's a case of, then you can suspect that it's a case of peritonsillar space abscess. But confirmatory diagnosis would be whiteboard needle aspiration by eating gaze needle. If that reveals pus, then we will be sure that patient is having abscess in the patient's area. The aspiration has to be done in the most dependent part or we will make an imaginary line from the interventional pillar vertically and horizontally through the base of uvula and at the upper outer quadrant of that imaginary line, we'll put the needle and aspirate. Occasionally, foul smelling pus comes on aspiration. Once the diagnosis is made, then you have to start with the medications. Medical treatment with urgent admission, IV fluids, IV antibiotics covering both gram positive, negative, and androps to be given. Safe reaction and the are commonly used antibiotics. Antihistaminics, decongestion drops and the energetic medicines are to be given to decrease pain. And receptive mouth gargle like betadine can be used when the patient is having throat discomfort and throat pain. When the patient is having halitosis, then we can use betadine solution too. Nowadays, aspiration is the most important technique of surgical treatment. In most of the studies, it has been found that aspiration of pus with the etin gauge is equally effective as incision and drainage. But occasionally, the pus has to be drained. 
the pus can be drained by incision and drainage. The incision is made with normal irrigation blade or telinous peritone abscess as drainage forces. It is usually suspected that the capsule of the abscess is not more than 5 mm. So if you go around 1 cm, this is more than enough to drain the abscess. Therefore, take a normal irrigation blade and mark at 1 cm from its tip and apply the tip there. So that we will not go beyond that level. Or in case of patent abscess drainage forceps, the forceps are already pointed and there is a and there is a mark at around one centimeter. So we will not go beyond one centimeter. The nick is made above and lateral to junction of two vaginal lines, horizontal along the base of uvula and vertical along the intertransal pillar. If we have already aspirated, then we know the area of the aspiration. So from there we can make an incision or we can make a nick and we can simply widen it with sinus forceps and the pus is drained. If we are using patent abscess forceps or quincy forceps, the forceps themselves act as the incision and drainage mechanism. You can simply insert the forceps, then you can simply widen them to have the dual function of incision and widening or draining. The incision is made here in the upper outer quadrant of two imaginary lines, one drawn from the base of uvula and the next one drawn from the intertransapular. If we can visualize the intertransapular and the base of uvula, but most of the times it will be difficult for us to find out the intertransapular because the soft palate will be edematous. Why the nick here? Why the nick not in other places? The answer is peritonsal space lies beyond the tonsils from the anterior pillar around at this area. And this is more aerial, therefore the infection can go more laterally. If you give a nick somewhere here, or if you spread from somewhere here, there will be bleeding. The pus will not come because the tonsils are infected and they are angry looking tonsils. Therefore, the incision is made at the outer quadrant to avoid injury to the tonsils and to other blood vessels. It will only prick at the area of the peritonsal space where the pus has been collected. Here, this is the common site of collection of pus. Therefore, if these are tonsils, this is collection of pus. So, this is the area where you can usually get the infection or you can usually get the pus. And this is felonious peritonsal abscess draining forceps. You can see here, there is a marking at around 1 cm here. When the patient develops peritonsal abscess, then there is again the chance that patient might develop second attack of peritonsal abscess. When the patient develops second attack of Quincy, then patient has to undergo tonsillectomy. But it is not usual to perform tonsillectomy after the first attack because around 80% of patients will not have the second attack of Quincy. Only 20% patients might get second attack. So after that, we can do surgery, usually after 4 to 6 weeks. So doing tonsillectomy surgery immediately after the first episode of patient's abscess is not mandatory. We can wait for the second attack to come. We can perform hot tonsillectomy or abscess tonsillectomy, which is usually avoided as it can lead to more bleeding and septicemia. Hot tonsillectomy means the operation is done at the same time of during the abscess. But the advantage of hot tonsillectomy is it avoids second admission in the hospital, it avoids long hospital stay, and it avoids the more antibiotics to use because you can do tonsillectomy at the same sitting, but you can wait for six weeks. So it is usual to perform tonsillectomy after 4 to 6 weeks of second attack of Quincy. Let's come to few complications of Quincy. Quincy might lead to paraphrenic space abscess when the infection goes more towards the lateral aspect. You know the peritonsal abscess is nearby the paraphrenic space. So the infection can spread to paraphrenic space to form paraphrenic space abscess. The infection might go more posteriorly and medially to go to retrophrenic space and that might lead to retrophrenic space abscess when it bursts more posteriorly and medially. Patient might also get laryngitis and laryngeal edema where the infection can go down as the local regional infection. Lung abscess, when the abscess ruptures and goes towards the lung, it is very uh, uncommon thing. Occasionally, intranjugular vein thrombosis also might be there and patient might also get septicemia and occasionally patient might die due to respiratory problem that is due to the upper airway obstruction at the level of the oropharynx. Thank you very much. Please have a read from the textbooks if you have any confusion. This is a very important question to be asked in the exam. So please 
be prepared for the same. Thank you. Good day.